time I talk about the problems with the BMI, the most common response I always get is, okay, well, what should we use instead? And the answer is nothing. Get rid of it and replace it with nothing. Yo, yo, and hello, my name is Lydia. And on today's episode of my 25 pound yo-yo, we will be talking about the BMI. Now, most of us know the BMI is that height weight thing that tells you if your weight is appropriate for both your height and your gender. It is a macro level tool, not a micro level tool. It does not do diagnostic analysis, but it does give you some useful information. So why is it that Hannah and the other fat activists want to throw out the BMI altogether? There is a lot to debate here, but before we get into the TikTok, I think we need to know a little bit more about BMI. So why don't we watch this next clip that come back and discuss. What is the BMI? The BMI is the body mass index. It's a mathematical calculation that uses a person's height, weight, and gender to yield a number that indicates a general indication of if the person is of healthy weight or not. Are there flaws in the BMI? Yes, the BMI does not account for body mass such as bone density and muscle mass. However, unless you have obvious amounts of muscle, the BMI is likely a good indicator if someone is overfat. Are there other measures other than BMI that can be used? Yes, there is body fat percentage and waist to height ratio and waist to hip ratio. And doctors will use these other calculations when BMI fails. But remember, BMI only fails for a very, very small percentage of people. So why do we need it? BMI is used as a risk factor by doctors when assessing patients' overall health. There are several risk factors that doctors use. They can be physiological, such as age, behavioral, such as drinking or smoking, genetic, such as hereditary conditions like cancers, or environmental, such as pollution or access to services. These are flags that doctors look for when evaluating a patient so that they know if there are specific areas that they need to pay closer attention to. For example, if you are a heavy drinker, a doctor may want to pay closer attention to your liver health than someone that never drinks. Likewise, if you are morbidly obese, your doctor may want to pay closer attention to your blood pressure, blood sugar, and cholesterol levels. So why not just test everyone for everything? Isn't this just lazy medicine? We could test for everything all the time, but wouldn't that be a waste of resources? Imagine having full blood work, a full body x-ray, an MRI, and an EKG at every checkup. Now, that doesn't sound possible. Which is why we triage our patients and get them the care that they need and not a whole lot of extra things that they don't. Why not just ask the patient questions? People lie. That's just a fact. How honest are you with the dentist when you are asked if you regularly floss? How honest are you with your doctor about your drinking and smoking habits? And how honest are you with your doctor when describing your lifestyle? I'm not saying that everyone lies, but many of us do. And the scale and BMI are numbers that can't lie. And it is much more effective to speak to a number that has no nuance when talking to a patient than simply stating, you appear overweight. So we still need the BMI? Well. The BMI is not perfect and has never claimed to be, but it is a measure and a useful starting point when diagnosing an individual's health. Is it the only measure? Absolutely not. But is it helpful to identify risk? Well, that's a big yes. So now that we know a little bit more about BMI, let's dive into the TikTok and see what Hannah has to say. Time I talk about the problems with the BMI, the most common response I always get is, okay, well, what should we use instead? And the answer is nothing. Get rid of it and replace it with nothing.
We literally don't need it. If a patient needs to be assessed for an illness, doctors use diagnostic testing to do that. If a patient has an illness, the doctor will treat that illness. If medications need to be dosed based on weight, there are formulas that already exist to calculate those dosages. If a doctor wants to educate a patient about the benefits of health promoting behaviors, they can and should do that with all their patients. There is no medical scenario where the BMI or any tool like the BMI is the most effective, most specialized tool for the job. None. We already have systems and tools in place to meet whatever a patient's specific health needs may be. Categorizing and pathologizing patients based on weight is and has always been lazy medicine. Let's start with why the BMI can't be thrown out altogether. The BMI is a tool and it's a useful tool. It is not a diagnostic tool, but we use all sorts of tools to accomplish any sort of task. We don't always start with the most accurate tool. That's usually a waste of time and resources. Let me give you an analogy. Let's say that I asked you to make me mashed potatoes, but I only gave you a pot, boiling water, and a potato masher. Yes, the potato masher is the best tool to make mashed potatoes, but you know what helps making mashed potatoes? a cutting board, a knife, and a peeler. Because then you can take the potatoes and peel them and cut them into smaller pieces, find out which potatoes have bruises, find out which potatoes are rotten, and don't put them into the pot. Then only take certain pieces of potato to put into your pot and then boil and mash them with the masher. Getting rid of the BMI is like getting rid of the knife and asking everybody to be treated with the potato masher, which is completely unnecessary. Doctors use numbers all the time, and the easiest number that I can think that relates strongly to weight is age. And a doctor will usually look at a patient's age before prescribing treatment. As a woman who is over 40, I've already had conversations with my optometrist about what we're gonna do when I need reading glasses and I already wear distance glasses. So do I wanna go for bifocals or do I wanna go for two pairs of glasses? And I also have other concerns about my health as I get older. I mean, menopause is just around the corner. So there are health concerns that a doctor would have based on the statistic of my age. Likewise, my boyfriend who is over 50 now gets a special exam every time he goes to the doctor, and that wouldn't have been necessary for someone who was much younger than him. Things like weight and age are also sometimes difficult to assess visually. Now, I often get mistaken for significantly younger than I am, and when I go to the doctor's appointment, it is important that they look at my chart. So for example, when I had my son, I was considered a geriatric pregnancy because I was in my 30s. And if my doctor just visually looked at me, he probably would have assumed that I was 25, but that was far from the truth. So knowing that I was of a certain age, I got more tests just to make sure that my baby was healthy, as I should, because keeping baby healthy should be my number one concern. Concern. When it comes to weight, yes, a doctor can assess someone who is morbidly obese just with their eyeballs. But if you've gained 20 pounds, you can hide that under clothes. When I was in high school, I knew a girl who hid her entire pregnancy, all nine months of it, underneath a baggy sweatshirt. So it is entirely possible. And weight changes do matter. If you have sudden weight changes in either direction, up or down, it could be indicative of a much, much larger problem. You could be suffering from depression. You could have side effects from your medication or worse. So a doctor monitoring your weight is completely within their rights and their responsibility to do so. We also need a number because we can't trust what people say. I am guilty, guilty, guilty of this at the dentist. Every single time the hygienist asks me, how often do you floss? I think, whenever I have something stuck in my teeth, when do you floss? But that is not the right answer. The right answer is every day or almost every day. And I usually give an answer like, oh, twice a week. You know, something that's somewhat believable without making me look super bad. And when the hygienist tells me that I need to floss more, am I upset with her? Well, no, I'm upset with me. I'm not upset with her. She is telling me the truth after all. And the same is true when questioned about your lifestyle. People lie. But luckily we have numbers that can prove otherwise. You see, especially in the fat acceptance community, a lot of them claim to have healthy lifestyles, claim to eat healthy and claim to exercise. But in truth, if you were actually doing those things and regularly doing those things, you wouldn't be obese.
So we have numbers so that the doctor can speak to the number. Instead of having a conversation that might end up in a debate, like, oh, you need to eat better. I eat very well. You need to exercise more. I exercise all the time. Well, these numbers don't lie. These numbers are telling me that you are obese. So there is something in your lifestyle that is contributing to this and we need to discuss it. Lifestyle questions are only as helpful as the patient is honest. When it comes to discussing healthy habits, I will agree with Hannah on this one. This is something that doctors should do with all patients. And my doctor does that with me as well during my annual checkup. But if weight isn't related to the thing that I'm in for, my doctor doesn't discuss it. And this is an area I agree that fat phobia does exist in. However, whenever the illness could be related to your weight, you should listen. The doctor does know something. And even if the doctor is wrong and your weight is not the cause of your illness, losing weight could help improve your overall condition anyways. When it comes to treating illnesses, yes, we do have technology today that can help almost anybody regardless of their size. However, wouldn't you like to know that you are at risk of developing a disease before it gets there? This is called preventative medicine. Should a doctor ignore the fact that their patient smokes because they haven't developed lung cancer yet? Or should they advise them that their lifestyle choices are contributing to factors that could develop lung cancer? I think most cancer patients would say that they would have appreciated knowing sooner than later about their diagnoses. So the BMI is not perfect, but it is a metric and a useful metric at that. Your body weight and body fat do have a relationship to your health. And since the doctor's job is to monitor and support your health, they need this tool to do their job. I'm going to end this video with a definition that Hannah seems to love to throw around, which is pathologize. So for those of you that don't know, pathologize means to characterize as physically or psychologically abnormal. But isn't that what obesity is? It is unhealthy and abnormal to carry extra weight. It is unhealthy and abnormal to be of a certain size. No matter how good your blood numbers are today, it does not negate the fact that you are at risk of developing serious health conditions in the future. The opposite of pathologize is to depathologize, which means to cease treating something as a medical condition. If doctors were to do that, that would mean that they would recommend obese people cease trying to lose weight, which I know is what the fat acceptance community wants anyways. But as a result, illnesses and deaths would go up. And you know who would be blamed? Doctors for not doing their job. But alas, this is my 25 pound yo-yo and not the BMI is useless and needs to be thrown out. So until next time, yo-yo and let's go.